is uh, the SDG Media Zone as part of the All for the Green Week in support of the G7 Environment Ministers meetings here in Bologna taking place <laughs> later this weekend. Thank you so very much for tuning on. Uh, we are live on Facebook's uh, Connect for Climate page. Um, please join the discussion with hashtag SDG Live as well as a hashtag All for the Green. Um, today we've got a very interesting panel talking about um, public-private partnerships. And let me just introduce my panelists quickly. So on my right, we've got Trammell Crow. Trammell is the founder of EarthX, um, which is based in Dallas. And we'll hear more about that in a bit. Uh, further along, we've got Nick Davis. He's the CEO of Grid Market. Thanks for joining us. And then finally, we've got uh, Sergio Fernandez de Cordova. Sergio is the chairman of the Public Foundation with whom we've been partnering to put up the SDG Media Zone both here in Bologna as well as the SDG Media Zone in New York where we had live interactions over the last couple of days. So the, the Media Zone here is in support of the G7 environment. The one in New York was set up in support of the UN Ocean <coughs> uh, Conference and we'll hear a little bit more about that. So right over to you, Sergio. Thank you, Max. Um, good morning, everyone. And uh, well, first and foremost, I wanted to, uh, to, to thank you, Max, and, and thank everyone at Connect for Climate for having us here uh, in Italy. And it's, it's really exciting for us to, uh, to have the Digital Media Zone um, really simulcast, and as we did with, uh, with President uh, of Palau in, um, in New York, uh, what was that, on Tuesday, Wednesday morning. And uh, we had the simulcast, which was with the SDG Media Zone, uh, at the UN uh, Conference of Oceans. So just to give you a, qu a quick uh, highlight of what happened this week and between our partnership and collaboration, and of course, you know, uh, as you have in this panel, um, Trammell Crow and his organization, EarthX, was also one of the key anchor partners that helped make sure that what we had in, in, at the UN Conference of Oceans was, 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 a, was, was doable. Was, and thank you for that, Trammell. And I wanted to give some stats because I think it's really important as we, uh, as, as we look at what the impact is that the digital media zone creates. And, and when you look at it, is we're really creating content. And what Public Foundation does is we bring together public and private partners in the world of media and technology. And we utilize the platforms that everyone has and really from a social media, scalable media, create short content to distribute to global audiences. So to give you a little bit of stats from uh, the media zone in our joint collaboration, um, we had 85 country reach in, in the last week since we've started the combined digital media zones. We've had over 8 million people and 65 million impressions already from the social media outlets. And obviously this is continuing to grow and continuing to really unfold. And this is just sort of some of the um, short info that we have to date. And this is as of, I believe, yesterday. So uh, I, I can actually add another stat. Yes, so sir. Since we're streaming live on Connect for Climate's Facebook, the number there over the last couple of days is that uh, we've had more than a million impressions just through the live streams. Wow. See, I mean, and, and this is the power of, of what we're doing here, and these partnerships are key, and, and hence, you know, the title of, of this panel is about a public and private partnership and how we're engaging people, engaging humans, engaging countries, engaging companies, organizations. And, and, and it's really, you know, for us as, as a foundation, when we do these media zones, it's really exciting. And, and again, um, as I uh, evolve this conversation here and talking about partnerships, I wanted to, uh, you know, really highlight uh, Trammell Crow. Trammell Crow is the chairman and founder of EarthX. EarthX is a platform that's been focused you know, out of Dallas. It's rebranded itself. It used to be Earth Day Texas, Earth Day Dallas, and, and it's now EarthX. It's global. And EarthX has helped and, and is now working with, um, with, with Nick at Grid Market and, and really focusing on how they're helping solve environmental issues and working with heads of states and evolving this conversation. So EarthX is not only just now an, an, a, a convening and one of, one of the most powerful convenings of, of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, Republicans and Democrats who believe in climate in America and, and really focused on, on a global, on Earth. And, uh, and really, Trauma, I'd love to take, kick it off to you and have you give us a little bit of background. A, why, why climate? B, 
um, you know, what's important about partnerships, especially as it relates to the issue topic here that we're talking about, public-private partnerships with the government of Palau, with a dear friend of yours, Tommy, and uh, Rimagatsu, and, uh, and you could say his name better. And uh, if you could, please uh, indulge and uh, give us a little bit of background. You just have to tell me. You just have to tell me when to stop. It's working <laughs> fine. You just have to fine. hold it to you. Mark. Thank you. Just tell me when to stop. Uh, why climate? Texas is an energy state that creates many problems for climate. Uh, why Democrats and Republicans? We're solidly a Republican state, so what we do is bring Democrats and Republicans together. We have a convening of Green Democrats, nine uh, collaborations and partnerships, 900 separate exhibitors with separate displays, uh, more universities come together to show off their sustainability than anywhere in America. Uh, more environmental groups come together. I would approximate 25 for ocean, 20 for tropical forest, probably 40 for carbon climate policy, uh, on and on. Uh, corporations, large and small, showing their <coughs> sustainability in their internal policies and in their products and services. And lastly, uh, government agencies, governors, head of state, uh, senators, congressmen, all coming together. And really, for the first time, many of them meet. And uh, I'd say the corporations are really glad to meet the environmental groups and vice versa. Excellent. And can you also kind of dive into, you know, what uh, President Palau, your relationship, you know, your desire to really focus on island states and, and how EarthX and partnerships with grid markets and, and others um, can really evolve the conversation, why it's so important. Yeah. Uh, the, a lot of people in Texas are in denial. A lot of corporations, a lot of energy groups. Uh, we're in our, sev our seventh year, so really we've gone six years with soft peddling climate. Our 250 speakers uh, might address climate on their own, but in our uh, material we don't because we're bringing in conservative corporations. Uh, so now to begin addressing it as we have this time, we've done it in ways that uh, aren't so personal with Exxon or Shell who exhibit, but Pacific Islands. Uh, which are clear cases of, of uh, sea level rise. Uh, uh, Raminigasau, Tommy Raminigasau, has such a commitment with the enormity of his, what, marine sanctuary, mm. and now this entire <coughs> nation going off the grid that we thought it was a great choice. Thank you, Tramo. And, and I think it's important for the audience to know that, you know, Tommy, the president of, of, uh, of Palau, was one of the co-chairs, I believe, of the UN Conference of Oceans. It was really one of the most active uh, Pacific Island and, and really island nation presidents. And, and hence, really, when, you know, we did the, um, you know, we, when we had our, uh, uh, our session, which was, you know, we had it in New York, and we also had it, uh, our simulcast uh, between here and, and Italy and, and uh, USA. Um, you know, he was really keen on wanting to really push the media conversation, get the word out, because, you know, the UN's real strong focus this year on oceans is really, you know, it's just one of the key elements of environment, but really something that, um, you know, the island countries are seeing the most. And, and, it, and it's really, you know, it really brings out, it brings a story to, you know, to a human level when you start and you sit there and you talk to, a, you know, a nation leader and, and who tells you that our country might be underwater in 10, 15 years. It really makes you, you know, it really makes you think. And I think that's important for everyone to understand that what happened at the UN uh, Conference of Oceans was that really a lot of these heads of states, most specifically those that are surrounded by water in island states and uh, least developed nations, uh, are coming in to the UN and to, um, to, to folks like everyone here, and looking for solutions. And, and what's exciting here, and I want to you know, seg segue into Nick, uh, to talk about grid market, and, and really, you know, well, how, is he, how is technology, data, helping some of these heads of states with their vision, with their 
um, ambitions, right? Because it's not just a vision, but it's really, and it's also not just an ambition, it's a, it's a desire to stay alive and, and to save and to be more environmentally friendly and, and to really utilize technology partnerships and the convening power that events like the G7, uh, Connect for Climate, Earth X, and Media Zones in the UN Conference of Oceans brings. So if you could please, A, give us a little bit of background on why Palau, why it's important, uh, how your technology can actually you know, uh, uh, help implement his, the president's vision and expand upon that within the island nations, as well as then give us a little bit of background on your technology. Sounds good. Thanks for having me here. Um, I think for over a century, uh, energy production, sales, et cetera, it's, it's been completely in the hands of the producer. Um, if you are a utility or if you're a power plant owner, you basically control what the consumer gets. It can be expensive power. It can be dirty power. Um, you're a price taker and you're a power taker as a consumer. And I think there's been a real sea change that's created tremendous opportunities for nations, for big companies, for big real estate portfolios. And it's the precipitous drop of the cost in clean, renewable, distributed energy tech. Um, it's empowering customers like never before. And, you know, again, customers can be corporations. They can be um, you and me. They can be uh, island nations, municipalities, states, cities. It's a, it's a wide range. But again, a big transition is going on anchored by price drops. And one of the big barriers still is information. Um, how do you know what combinations of technologies can help you get off of that grid dependency, get off of things like diesel dependency? Um, and again, that dependency and reliance <laughs> on the price makers, who again were the energy producers in the past, um, you know, th that can take a few different forms. And for an island like Palau, um, they're 85% dependent right now on diesel imports, uh, particularly from one country in Southeast Asia. And um, they have to accept $5 a gallon, $6 a gallon at times, which can be I think recently it was about a fifth of their GDP was going to energy. Mm -hmm. And imagine if they no longer had to divert that amount of wealth and resources to energy. Imagine if um, energy had an upfront cost but then produced for the next 15, 20, 25 years and was clean and free. Um, I think we're getting to that place. And my company, Grid Market, our whole goal is to really empower those, those consumers of energy to start producing, to become prosumers. Um, to start flipping the script. And, you know, I would love to say that um, these benefits are driven by the, the, will to, the willingness to do good and the willingness to um, really support the climate. I'm, I'm young and I'm an idealist, but the reality of it is these things are driven by price. Um, utilities are certainly not going to choose to do this the right way. We have to make those decisions for them. But what's really encouraging is you see the big real estate portfolios, you see corporations. Um, and now you see nations who are so committed to fixing that, that, that price dependency issue, but you're seeing them make the right choice from a climate <laughs> perspective too. They're choosing technologies that drop carbon. Um, they're choosing to do things like solar, uh, battery storage to, to store that energy and reduce intermittency problems, to get fuel cells on site as backup power too, really to use the grid as a backup power mechanism. And you, we started in, um, in a few states. We started in complicated places like New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey, where utility rates and tariffs are crazy and complicated. Um, the beauty of a place like, like Palau is that uh, you can immediately go in, um, install assets on a distributed level, you can create microgrids that are resilient, and you can really reduce that, that, that horrible dependency on, on fossil imports. And that's what, that's what we aim to do, is really create a data platform that enables the reduction of that dependency. That's right. Th thank you, Nick. And, and so, when, so tell us a little bit about, you know, you met, you, both of you gentlemen, met with the president of Palau and the permanent rep, Olai, and, and you formalized a public-private partnership. And SDG 17 is Partnerships for the Goals, which is, if you can't bring in the private sector, how are you helping drive economic change and how are you bringing the private sector and private funding to help solve these problems? So when you sat down with the president, um, sort of tell the audience, what was that like? Mr. Crow? Well, Sylvia Earle, for a place that had motion. Mike, Mike. 
Sylvia Earle made the introduction at EarthX and brought these parties together. Can you give us a quick second who's Sylvia Earle for the audience? Sylvia Earle is a great spokes lady for oceans with Mission Blue. She's been deeper in the water than any woman in the world and about two guys, huh? Uh, uh, she has extensive experience in island nations and uh, especially the South Pacific. I think she and her staff speak a few of those languages. So. Uh, she presented Tommy, the president of Palau. Yeah, uh, we're a platform. Yep. They came together, they met. And as far as making that a partnership, that would be something that Nick could describe. So give us a little bit of background. You sat down and you formalized. Explain to us, what is that in, in a public and private setting? Give us a little bit of background about the meeting for the audience to better understand. You know, what does it mean to sit down um, you know, a gentleman who has the largest organization in the country and maybe the world that brings together bipartisan, you know, leaders, you looking at a technology from, from a, a nation-building perspective and a head of state and indulge and give the folks a little bit of uh, education. What does that meeting look like? What, is, what does it look like to, uh, wh where is this partnership going to evolve and what's that going to look like? Yeah, and I would say <laughs> the most important things as you kind of develop those early stages of partnerships is outlining the commitments that you're going to make to each other, um, you know, to, to the different organizations involved. Um, and EarthX for us b brought the parties together. Um, we were sitting down at a breakfast in Texas. There was a U.S. senator there. Um, and there then you know, Tommy, the president of Palau. And I think somebody from the power company. Exactly, uh -huh. yeah. And, and uh, you know, the, the power to convene those entities really enabled us to, to kick that partnership off. And um, then a few months later, we're sitting in New York um, at the Conference of Oceans, really formalizing and crystallizing what this looks like. And, and again, what it looks like is each organization committing to, um, to doing what they need to do to drive the conversation forward. Uh, from a grid market perspective, you know, our commitment was to come in and really automate and produce that baseline assessment of what Palau needs to do to reduce that horrible dependency on imported fossil fuels. And, and um, you know, Palau right now has a lot of goodwill uh, coming their way. There are countries that want to help them. Um, I know New Zealand has been helping them. The U.S. government has been helping them, too, through some of the federal agencies to um, see how their grid needs to be updated and maintained. Uh, but what the what they were, were what they were and are lacking is that crystallized centralized vision of you know how best to allocate these resources to help them drop that dependency as quickly as possible so um, they committed to sharing data with us and enabling us to really kick that process off because data is the food that allows our engine to operate um, so we can then commit to really putting the pieces together and uh, bringing in the technology, the financing, the pieces of the puzzle that are missing to get these things done, coordinated as effectively as possible. And then, of course, we have organizations, I mean, EarthX in this is so critical because that's going to be the, the catalyst to really celebrate the success here and make sure that it scales and spans to other places, too. Because while it starts with one, uh, and while Palau is a fantastic use case, we have to scale this all over the world if we're going to meet some of the challenges we have to address here. Um, mm -hmm. We're in a lot of trouble. And, we all have to partner to get out of it. And that's, <clears throat> that's really a point I'd like to pick up on. So this is a fantastic example of a public-private partnership that's bringing together multiple actors to implement a clean energy solution and help a country deal with the challenges that they're being faced from climate change as well as uh, some of the environmental issues. So the question is now, um, we're heading into the G7 meeting. So how would you like to see a replication of this on a grander scale for all countries around the world. How do we scale up the solutions that are required to address climate change, um, both on the mitigation side, on, on, on transitioning away from fossil fuels onto, into a low-carbon future, as well as on the adaptation side, on dealing with the future impacts of climate change? Maybe for you, Trammell first. Yeah, Trammell well, first. No, I think that both of those guys could speak, speak much more elegantly. We'll bring the parties together. Uh, uh, we'll bring New Zealand, we'll bring universities, and we'll bring some p uh, power corporations and utility companies. But, 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 but I think that there's, you, you have a lot in, in, in this space. You've been doing it for many years. You understand government. 
right? So what would that message be to these G7 leaders? I would never purport to understand government. Uh, <laughs> the message that we deliver is that uh, bipartisanism uh, 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 and cooperation with, with corporation and, and public is uh, uh, the only way to go. Uh, federal governments and even states are, ha are paralyzed. So like Nick focuses on city, we, uh, we go to city. And probably have about 25 cities represented with their officials. Thank you, John. Yeah, I, I would say one of the most important things to, um, to really focus on is and the, the important things to kind of drive into um, national leaders' heads and, and muni leaders, state leaders, et cetera, is that we don't have time for the prototypical crap. Um, pardon my French. You know, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of bureaucracy um, that goes into all these decision-making processes. Everyone's got a cousin who they want to support who you know, is a friend of the government sitting on the outside. We don't have time to deal with this. Um, we don't have time for business as usual. We don't have time to prop up y your prototypical electric utilities that have monopolies in these countries. Th there's no time to waste. Um, we have a tremendous carbon debt. If we stopped producing, uh, if we stopped emitting any carbon now, we'd still be in trouble. If we cut the tap off completely right now, um, we don't have time to wait for this transition. So the first thing we have to do, and you know, people have been working on it for years now, is to really start benchmarking and identifying the problem. Um, we do that for free uh, in most of the places where we operate because these things are a tremendous burden, especially on developing nations. You have big consulting firms and engineering firms that come in and want to charge millions of dollars to do an assessment and create corporate plans and, and to show people how to um, really transition their, their, their energy systems. And again, we don't have time, and a lot of these places don't have the money to write those checks right now. Um, so we have to find innovative ways to get in. We have to find inno innovative ways to finance projects, and we have to reduce and remove some of the traditional barriers. And, and you know that can be nepotism. It can be a tremendous variety of things. And as an American, um, in our current phase of, of politics, uh, you know you see how um, you see how certain barriers can get in the way of the prototypical process or, or really hurt things. And we, we don't have time. That's the only thing I can emphasize. So again, we exist to accelerate those timelines and increase deployments as rapidly as possible. So my, my two cents, if I, if I may, Max, um, I think that from the perspective of you know, what, what public does and we convene, and, and I, I believe that we exemplify SDG 17 for the most part and everything that we do from the media zones, from bringing public and private partners together to help even celebrate these conversations. And I think that when you're looking at the G7, G7 leaders, and I think that a lot of what we're seeing and, and the success that we're seeing is, is really around, you know, just looking at, you know, bring in innovation, right? Think outside the box. I think it, it's leverage of different currencies, right? Data, open architecture, allow others to come in and help solve the problem. I mean, given the current political state that we're living in, in the context of climate, I think that it's important that it's, that we start to bring in the innovation that is, is knocking on the door, that is trying to get in. And, and I think that for, from the political leaders is, is really the perspective of just unlock the potential of innovation and, and, and really unlock the potential of a legal framework that can scale that innovation so that we're not so dependent on, on the governments, but we are you know, sort of creating the, the, the framework that allows that to, to evolve and, and give, you know, and, and really uh, decentralize that conversation because the only way we're going to solve these problems is if we get everyone involved, that we tell the story, we communicate it to everyone, we bring in the partners that convene the partnerships, we bring in the technologies that are using the data. So um, it's my, my, my three cents, I think. That was and, and this is very much uh, also applicable to all the other SDGs besides climate change where um, you have to unlock the opportunities and highlight the transition into the future economy and, and where every individual can get involved in that. So maybe in closing, could we just get a, a, a quick uh, shout out to our Facebook audience? What's your message for um, the younger audience that's following us live on Facebook? Keep your expectations high and, and chase those goals. I think we get excited about um, 
frankly, goals that aren't sustainable because we need to move faster. So people will, you'll have countries, you'll have cities, you'll have states, they'll say, all right, we want to be 30%, um, we want to be on 30% clean energy by 2050 or 2030, et cetera. We don't have time. How about this? How about energy is free and clean in 25 years? You know, th that's the kind of thing that we have the technology to get to now. Let's set higher goals for ourselves so we can focus on other problems, you know. We can start colonizing other planets after we've solved problems here on Earth. And um, again, the technology is here to make sure that energy is no longer a problem. And it's been a problem for too long. This is something that should be a human right. It's something that we're able to produce now for free. Um, and frankly, it's ridiculous that we haven't solved it yet. Thankfully, it's revolutionizing now. We're having amazing conversations around it. But keep the goals high, and let's keep innovating and get this done fast, because we don't have time to waste. Sir. Uh, same thing. Hurry up. Don't wait for your elders. Uh, <laughs> make it up as you go along. Uh, and don't grow up. <laughs> um, and, and I think that, yeah, I mean, the message is, is def definitely get involved. Um, you know, find an organization, local, regional, national, global, that you could connect with that that you could also, uh, uh, you know, not just connect with in, in, a, in a perspective of the things that you're working on, but then also how can you expand what you're bringing to the table and educate others to get involved. Use media to your advantage, use technology to your advantage, and, and the data, as Nick said, is, is, is out there. It, it's the information is out there. We have all the tools possible, and I think, um, you know, just, just do it, get involved. And, um, and the resources are out there. The, the Sustainable Development Goals were designed by 193 countries um, and the UN for the purposes of bringing it to the people, partnerships. You know, climate, you know, again, the, the, this, this event here is to engage everyone, to give people a platform. And Connect for Climate it has, is doing that specifically. Look at, you know, if you, if you, are, if you happen to be in Bologna, you'll see that in every street corner there's something leading you somewhere. There's the calendar, there's the information. It's trying to get everyone involved. And I think that, you know, the underlying message is, is really it's up to you out there to get involved and, and do something. The tools are there. So, so you've heard it live from uh, the SDG Media Zone here in Bologna. Uh, we've heard a great example of a public-private partnership that aims to bring clean technology solutions to the uh, island state of Palau. Um, Trammell, you, you're holding a marble of the world in your fingers. Uh, would you like to try and explain exactly the meaning of that? The earth is mainly ocean, and it's in your hands. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and this is really the earth that we're working to save, that we're all working together. Yeah, and, it, and, and the solutions are, and the technologies and innovation that we heard about right. today on clean energy also very much applicable to all the other environmental issues that, that we're tackling at the same time to achieve the sustainable goals. So we heard innovations um, in cleaning up the oceans. We heard innovations in providing climate-smart agriculture and, and preventing land degradation that all together help solve the uh, climate crisis as well as bring us to that low-carbon resilient future that um, is in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you so very much for joining us live at the SDG Media Zone in Bologna for the All for the Green Week. Um, keep on tuning into our Facebook page, Connect for Climate, and join the discussion with hashtag SDG Live as well as hashtag All for the Green. Thank you for joining us, and thank you to the panel. Thank you. Thank you.